Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode. Um, getting towards 200 episodes. Pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, so I've got some stuff to show you, uh, as usual. I've got, uh, I found some Hot Wheels in the wild, you know. Um, I don't really hunt anymore, admittedly. But of course, anytime I'm in a store... You know, I check out what's going on. Duh. Uh, so I did find some of the latest Hot Wheels, and uh, I'll just quickly show you those. I don't know if we're gonna. Oh, I don't, we're probably not gonna look at any of these in the second segment or whatever. Um, but it's uh, this case, which is uh, the E case. Uh, this is definitely a super treasure hunt that I want, of course, because it is a Porsche, and I I collect Porsche Hot Wheels. Um, so definitely want to, I actually picked up two regulars, so, um, and I don't know, these all, these, I think these are all E-Case, I am so not paying attention to, uh, what is going on here with Hot Wheels, I just haven't really, every year that goes by, it's not that I could care less, I, I like them, I just don't, I'm not as gung-ho as I used to be. I'm more gung-ho, of course, about the premium die-cast stuff. You know, my favorite, Auto World, you know, Tomica Limited Vintage, uh, Kyosho, oddball stuff. Anyway, real 164 scale replicas. But I do still like the basic stuff. And I actually really do still want to get back into, like, customizing. That was so much fun. And I, and I still definitely want to do it. I still have, like, all my customs uh, that were pretty cool. Maybe sometime I'll do a rundown, do a video of all of them. And uh, all the ones I still have, and just show you, and then maybe that'll get me back into it. But really, I think I gotta wait for my kids to get a little bit older. Uh, but anyway, Mazaripu in Urban Outlaw livery, um, Audi RS Coupe in blue, looks pretty good. Uh, let's see here. This thing's crazy. The Manga Tuner. Weird one. Kind of like the Mad Manga, but... Uh, apparently there's a card variation of this. Uh, this one is... I think the newer card. I'm not sure. But it's definitely... An, there's a card art variation. Not a variation in the car. But there is a card art variation, so look out for that. Um... And I think it's just the front end of the, the rendering of the vehicle looks different in the card art variation. I don't think it's accurate to the vehicle. This is the one that is actually, the card art looks the same as the front of the vehicle on this one. I think it does anyway. So, yeah, there's a card art variation, so look out for that for you card art collectors. Custom Cadillac Fleetwood. I don't think this casting has been used in quite a while. It's got to be at least five years since it's been used, I think. I don't remember. I don't recall seeing it any time uh, lately. So there's that one. <clears throat> uh, the Alpine A110 Cup, which is the casting that debuted in 2019, I believe. Uh, this one actually has a D on it for D case, but I think it was also found in the E case. I don't know. Some of these I found at a Walmart, and the others I found at Target. Uh, Range Rover Velar. I think this casting was also new to last year, 2019. Here it is in 2020 in black. It looks great in black. Um, very, very cool. And then uh, Moon Eyes 49 Volkswagen Beetle pickup. It's also E case. Pretty awesome. And uh, then these two the Tesla Model 3. There's that one. And then, actually, this isn't really sharp. This is the 2018 Honda Civic Type R. And for a $1 model, man, that, that one in black and red looks quite good. So those are the basic models I found. Uh, the rest of this video, I'm going to show you a, a box that I got from my good old Romanian pal, Dicastrum. So, uh, yeah, so thank you. Oh, and one other thing real quick. <clears throat> he did send me this. He wants me to sell this for him just to avoid some international shipping charges and all that. So if anybody's interested in this super sil silhouette, it's a 143rd scale Ebro Tomitech. 
Um, it's really super nice. I don't collect, of course, anything outside of one 64 scale. So obviously this is not something for me, but if you guys are interested in it, uh, let me know. Um, to be honest, I probably wouldn't let it go for like under a hundred dollars shipped. It is not a cheap piece. If you go on eBay, um, they typically sell for what looks like like around 200 or 225 shipped. So a hundred dollars shipped is actually a really good price on it. So if you guys want it, let me know. I might end up just posting it to eBay. I know a lot of the people that watch the channel probably aren't larger scale collectors, but yeah, if you want it, let me know. Or if you want me to send you picture, more pictures of it or whatever, uh, just give me a holler. Um, so he sent me a box. He always includes like some older uh, Tomica cars that are in played with condition that are pretty cool. And in this one, he included uh, two uh, Toyota Celicas. Uh, so there's this one here. It's copyright date 1999. Uh, it's in 160th scale. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if we'll look at these in the second segment of the video, so we'll just take a peek at them now. Um, so yeah, they are the same casting. One just has this little front piece for those rally lights, and then this one. They both have opening doors. You, know, you got your classic Tomica basic model thing going on with the suspension and all that. So two cool little models. I do appreciate that. And then he sent me two and we're gonna look at these he sent me two welly vehicles um one is this van i think it's a volkswagen i can't see the front of it i don't know and they don't label these things with what they are uh technically this is 160th scale but we'll we'll peek into that this one's obvious that it's a porsche pretty cool so we will definitely take a look at that in the second segment so we got two welly uh vehicles to look at and then we got two kyosho uh, one is the ferrari mondial 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 i don't know how to pronounce it t cabriolet in yellow that's sweet uh this is a casting i actually didn't have i have the mon mondial mondial whatever i have the casting in black but i don't have it in a convertible i've got it in a hard top so that's pretty cool and then uh the porsche porsche carrera gt in white this looks absolutely fantastic so of course we're going to take a look at these this stuff uh up close uh in the next segment so please stay tuned for that and then the lat the other cars that he gave me are all we got some TLV, and we got two more TLV right here. So uh, we'll quick run them down as we normally do. The Nissan Violet 1400 Deluxe. You're only going to see them in the boxes for now. So if you want to see what the actual cars look at, you look like uh, you're going to have to stay tuned. Uh, Toyota Pet Corona 1500. Okay. Uh, the uh, Toyota Carina 1600 ST. And yeah, just looking at these renderings on the boxes might not be that all that interesting, but when you get these out of the package, believe me, they're interesting. The Prince Clipper, little truck. Uh, the Isuzu Belay, Belette, 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 uh, I don't know, 1300. My pronunciation of some of these words is honestly terrible, I'm sure. But, you know, if you tell me how to pronounce it right once, I'll get it and I'll keep pronouncing it correctly. Uh, the Toyota Pet Crown Wagon. That looks really cool. So we're going to get these out of the package and, and take a peek for sure. Uh, this is the Subaru 1000 Super DX. The odd thing about this one is I don't, the, the color on here does not match this car at all. I've taken this one out of the package and I looked at it. Um, the color is not that color. It's actually like a silver and it looks amazing. This actually was like one of my favorite ones. So that one is sweet. So definitely stay tuned for that. And then he sent me two Ferraris. Um, and these are two that I kind of passed on. I just didn't have the, the coin at the time to go ahead and pre-order these. And uh, so I ended up passing on them, but they're two Dinos. One of them's in black. This one's in black. This is what the uh, 24 
uh, 6 GTS in black. And then the uh, 246 GT Type E in white. So two Ferraris. And of course, we're going to take these out of the package and stuff. I got to get this stuff all out of the package so I can display it in my diecast room. Um, in other news, there is going to be some changes to the room per usual. I, I'm, I've been changing it up quite a bit. It's still a, a freaking mess, okay, to be honest. It is just a mess. There's stuff all over. I need to vacuum in here. I need to get some dust out of here. Um, it takes a long time for this room to get dusty because it is sort of cut off from my, um, my HVAC system in the house. So it's somewhat isolated. So it doesn't, and obviously it doesn't get a lot of traffic. I'm like the only one that comes in here. So it doesn't get very dusty, but it's been years since I've really kind of dusted in here. So I really need to get some dust out of here. I need to clean some stuff up. I need to do, make some improvements. And maybe if I'm able to accomplish that, we will do a room tour, um, another room tour. If I'm finally able to get it somewhat presentable. So stay tuned to the channel for that. So, all right, so let's take a look at uh, some real good premium die casts close up. Trust me, if you were just a Hot Wheels collector, that is fine. I totally understand. Um, but you should still take a look at some of this stuff. It's just really cool die cast to just kind of like pass on. So that's my advice, whatever. But, uh, you know, stay tuned. Let's take a look at some cool cars together. Okay, guys, so we're going to start with these Welly models. Um, these usually are pretty interesting, actually. They, they're they fairly detailed. Uh, you know, I think these things are pretty cheap or inexpensive um, in some places. Uh, you know, like in comparison to, like, basic Hot Wheels. Um, I don't think we get them really anywhere here in the U.S. Oh, man. Well, you know what? There's price right at there's price right on the back of this thing. So a one forty nine euro, and I think right now, um, you know, and I could be completely wrong because I don't do anything with exchange rates, but I think right now a euro is pretty close to the U S dollar, um, fairly close, I think. Uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm way off, but a dollar fifty for this thing. Uh, maybe the euro is worth a little bit more. It probably is worth a little bit more than the, do the dollar, but uh, that gives you an idea. Anyway, of close to cost, you can just look up an exchange rate and you'll know. Uh, but <clears throat> so these are kind of like basic models, but they're it, and they're usually a little bit bigger than 164. They're 160 a scale, uh, but usually they are pretty darn nice for what you get for that price. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, I've got a few wellies in my collection. Uh, some of them, I've gotten some from Diecastrum in the past as well. And this one is a Mercedes, actually. A Mercedes, what model is it? Mercedes-Benz V-Class. I don't think these are made in the U.S. at all. It's like a minivan, but it's a Mercedes minivan. Uh, typically, these things are going to have some generic wheels. They're not going to have, like, stock wheels. They're going to be plastic, plastic base, metal body. Um, it does have, like, kind of a little bit of an insert here for the grill, and it does also have, well, I guess that's it, just that. It's a one-rivet construction. It hooks into the back of the casting. The casting is, of course, metal. Uh, the plastic is a nice molded in, uh, plastic, or the interior is a nice molded plastic but look at the way the seat or the seats in the back are orientated you've got them facing each other which is interesting that's definitely not u.s minivan style with feet uh, seats don't typically face each other i wonder if those actually swivel around in the actual van and it's got like a moonroof which is pretty cool and uh yeah Anyway, it's a, it's a cool little casting. It's a nice one to join my collection. Uh, next, what we got is a Porsche. And I'm going to go ahead and I got to cut. They actually are taped. The boxes are taped together. So I'm going to go ahead and open. 
open this up. And it's a nice looking Porsche. And again, 160th scale. So they are not 164 scale. They are big. Uh, somewhere in between 164 and 155, of course. Looking pretty good. We got painted detail for the headlights. You actually got like an inserted detail for the taillight, which is great for this casting. And look at the base. So it's a 911 turbo. And two rivet construction plastic wheels, but the plastic wheels have tread, which is interesting. And I mean, it's the same wheel as on the minivan. So a generic wheel, but a good looking generic wheel for sure. Um, it looks like this, yeah, this back spoiler bit is plastic. It's an ad. This is a cool little casting. It's a cool little tooling. I like it. That one's pretty pretty awesome. So thank you very much again, uh, Diecastrum. At Diecastrum. Go ahead and check him out on Instagram, please. I mean, he's got an amazing collection. He's also got a YouTube channel by the same name. And uh, he's a, actually really a green light fanatic, so... If you like looking at uh, rare green light cars, <laughs> I know firsthand because I ship them to him from the U.S. as I hub for him. I know what he gets, and uh, he gets the stuff sent here. And let me tell you, it's uh, just some crazy stuff. Green machines and all. All right. This is the Porsche Carrera GT in white and it is awesome I'm having a little trouble here with my uh, phone holder go ahead and zoom in just a little bit uh, yeah <clears throat> it's a Kyosho it looks great Kyoshos are awesome uh, this one I always look out for paint rash on Kyoshos there's some models that suffer from it usually the real older ones this one has no issues. Look at that mesh back here. Um, what it actually is, is plastic, but then it's got the printing of the mesh on it. And man, that looks great. That looks absolutely fantastic. In person, it looks just amazing. You can see the engine underneath it. Um, so this is a really good version of this car. Of course, you get inserted detail for headlights. You get inserted detail for taillights. Is what you'd expect with Kyosho. It just looks like a real little model. Uh, even the side mirrors look good. They're not separate pieces. They are actually cast into the, the mold for the body. Uh, you get plastic base with Kyosho. Who cares, really, though? It's still got some weight to it. It's metal aside from that. And the details that they put into these things are just, you know, as real, really, as it gets. Especially if you are, like, a supercar collector or someone that likes a lot of exotic cars, especially European exotic cars. Um, Kyosho is definitely a brand that you just need to... You're going to want to get a bunch of stuff once you start getting into Kyosho. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is another Ferrari, of course. This is the Mondial, 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 whatever, T Cabriolet. Uh, this one's typical Ferrari fashion. Usually, the reason why this came with a little screwdriver, by the way, a little GIS screwdriver, is simply because this came as a model kit. Technically came as a model kit. What I mean by that is they weren't licensed to make 164 scale Ferraris uh, when they made these. And uh, <clears throat> to skate around that, they made model kits. And by model kit, uh, model kit in the very basic sense, basically the base wasn't put on and the tires weren't put on the rims of the axles. So that's all you had to do is slap this thing together, put two screws in the base, and you got yourself a nice 164 scale model. And this one is definitely nice. <clears throat> Yellow in color. Uh, the base, of course, is plastic. There's the two screws that I was just talking about. The tires are rubber. The rims look real to the vehicle. Um, you do get some lensed or inserted detail here right in the front 
This one had pop up and down headlights. As you can see, they're cast into the body there. The paint's a little thick on this one, so you can't see it quite as good, but there it is right there. And a uh, little tiny Ferrari logo, you get uh, inserted inside uh, the little headlights or taillights there too in red. Um, it's convertible, so you get nice detail modeled interior. Side mirrors are a separate piece, little side window right there. I mean, every little detail is basically there. This one rolls, but it squeaks when it rolls, which who cares? It's just going to go on display anyway, and it's quite awesome. So as far as Kyosho Ferraris go, I try to get um, at least one of every casting that is beyond Series 2. So here's another little quick Kyosho story before we get into Tomica Limited Vintage stuff. Uh, don't buy Ferrari Series 1 or 2, okay? Just take my word for it. Don't buy them. They're not good. This is before they really got down with the heck they were doing. And do not buy Ferrari Series 1 or for Series 2. Get anything beyond that, and you're going to get a pretty cool model. Uh, but if you go for Ferrari Series 1 or 2, they're just really not, not good for various reasons. So we can make a whole video on that. But uh, yeah, after that, though, go for it. Pretty cool. All right. Uh, should we just stick with Ferraris for a moment? Let's do that. I was going to save these for the finale, but uh, these are Dinos. These aren't as popular as far as Ferraris go. And you guys have probably already seen these. Um, of course, Lamley shows every TLV model as it comes out. These came out recently, so undoubtedly if you watch my channel you likely watch Lamley and you've already seen these um, these also have been shown probably by hot customs too. another great channel to watch both of those channels are just fantastic and uh, of course Chen from hot customs also writes for Lamley on the website as I do so kind of a iron triangle there it's pretty cool all right so anyway here is the Dino and you can see the motor in the back. It looks fantastic. This one has a little bit of suspension. It's got, of course, inserted detail for the headlights. Look at that front end. Beautiful. Uh, and, of course, inserted detail for the tail as well. Little tiny uh, pieces for the exhaust. A fantastic model. So I'm really glad I got this. Um, just really cool. This one does come with an accessory. It comes with mirrors. That you have to glue on yourself, which is definitely, in my opinion, the worst thing about Tomica Limited Vintage is they make you glue on parts if you need to. But I do understand a little bit why. And I think the main reason why is because they would probably break off. They're going to be frail and they're afraid they probably would break off uh, in any sort of packaging that they put them in. Because they don't screw their cars down to a base like some other premium manufacturers do. Um, so therefore, they have to package them in a way uh, that could cause damage to the side mirrors if they actually were to put them on at the factory. But that being said, these cars are expensive, and it would be really nice not to have to actually put some art in, into it from yourself uh, when getting the models and trying to get those mirrors on straight. So... And as a result of it, most people don't even put on those accessories. And I'm not going to either. All right, so there's that one. And then the uh, second one is in black. This is the Dino 246 GTS. And again, as you can see right here, so this one comes with two separate pieces. It comes with a top piece to cover the roof and a uh, side mirror piece. And neither one I'm, I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna leave it as a convertible because I think it looks really cool as an open top car. So, and of course as Ferraris go with, if you're familiar with the Ferrari Tomica Limited Vintage, they come in this packaging that's quite elaborate. And very, very nice. Um, so getting these two models, I believe catches me up with Tomica Limited Vintage Ferraris. There's more coming. No new castings yet. There's not another new casting yet that's been announced. I hope they do something else. 
uh, instead of just recolors of all these models but uh, man this one looks huh, quite good in black very very similar car um, almost identical actually uh, the big difference of course is the roof of the car being absent other than that they're pretty much pretty much the same and of course the color of the car is different as well but uh, yeah it, this one really highlights the interior though as you can see the steering wheel in there uh, you can see the tan seats nice Italian leather and uh, looks quite good so and the motor tooling I think is the same but there it is uh, these are just beautiful okay if you can get them get them uh, so that being said we're in Tomica limited vintage land now so we are going to take a look at uh, we got seven more pieces to take a peek at so stay tuned for all seven uh, we're going to start with this LVN 13B this is a Nissan Violet 1400 Deluxe all these actually have boxes that are not in great shape and I sincerely could care less about the boxes the only function the boxes have is to store the cars if I needed to do them if I needed to take them off a display and to store them that you'd have something reliable to store them in but to me that is their only purpose I do not care about the condition of them typically I know it matters uh, sometimes as far as resale value goes but I really don't care because I'm not planning on reselling them anytime soon and if I ever did decide to get rid of my Tomica Limited Vintage Collection, which is highly unlikely, it would probably be one of the last things to go. Um, they would catch coin anyway. They wouldn't. They they don't really devalue. So, and this thing is really nice. I actually have a version of this casting. Uh, I came out, I think, recently, the Nissan Violet. And this one is LVN13B. It's got a very detailed interior. And of course, look at these. Look at the grill. Look at the headlights. Look at all the details that go into the car. Suspension. So, you know, honestly, here's what I'm going to recommend. If you don't have a Tomica Limited Vintage car in your collection, you don't have a single one, okay? And really, I don't care what you do. Get the cheapest one you can find on eBay or, you know, whatever. And trust me, if you collect diecast, you can afford to buy one, okay? It's really, if you can afford to collect, you know, 20 mainline cars at a dollar a clip, you can afford to buy a Tomica Limited Vintage. And there's plenty of options to do it. You can do it on eBay. You can do it through Japan Booster. You can pre-order stuff, which guarantees you get the model that you want. Um, you can do it through Hobby Link Japan. There's there's various places that you can get these cars and get them fairly inexpensively in comparison to a lot of other die casts. So what I recommend is the same thing I recommended a long time ago when I first got into Auto World is just get one, okay? Just get one. Get one and see how you like it. I know I kind of sound like a pusher, right? But uh, in all honesty, get one get a decent one actually it really doesn't matter just get any one of a car that you're semi interested in and check it out see what you think and chances are you're probably going to like it a lot and you're probably going to want more uh so yeah i guess i take that back don't get one because otherwise you're going to want more and uh yeah you might lose interest in some other things in your collection that's okay start selling those things and start buying more Tomica limited vintage uh but yeah they're awesome okay they are they really are even if they're a car you honestly don't really didn't even know existed or care about you have to get them in your hands though to really appreciate them all right enough of that lv 14a this is the prince clipper oh and that's another thing too they make really cool like trucks like bigger who i just ripped this box even more I just said I didn't care about the box, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But, <clears throat> but it's okay. And again, these were all gifted to me, basically. So this is an older one. It was packaged a little bit differently. And it's probably packaged a little bit differently because it's a truck. 
but here it is. So this thing is cool. Yeah, they make trucks, they make buses. The buses can get be very, very pricey. Warning. But uh, they make these things. Let's go a little back piece, a little canvas cover. It goes on the back like that. It's got a lot of suspension travel. What a cool model. <clears throat> Again, this is not something like, if this came out in a basic Hot Wheel or something like that, I probably would not care about it at all. But the fact that this is, like, so detailed, it's got, like, the lens detail, like, little inserts for the headlights. Uh, the taillights on this one are painted. It's okay. Like this, actually, this spare tire right here, underneath is rubber. This is rubber. The rivet goes through it right here. But this is rubber. Like, they really didn't need to do that, but they did that. That was really cool. And generally, they're all metal construction. This one, yeah, this is metal. It's got some plastic right here around the outside, but in general, it's, it's metal. And it looks just really, really, really cool. All right, let's keep her going. I'm taking a little bit too much time on each model here. Uh, the next one we're going to do is the Isuzu. And this one's an older one, LV16A. The older ones were packaged a little differently. The insert, anyway, was packaged a little differently. Some of them actually didn't have suspension here. This one does. So, Isuzu Belay, Bellet, Bellet, 1300 in like this kind of cream color with chrome hubcaps see weird car suspension of course really really cool so and I will say that was the hardest thing for me to get into Tomica Limited Vintage at first was like I was like well they really don't make many cars that I would really be interested in and the ones that they do make are, were extremely expensive on the secondary market, like the 260Z, um, like the BMWs, wow, uh, you know, some other stuff. And then, you know, I ended up getting just a few weird, odd models and getting really into it. And then as soon as they started releasing Ferraris, it's like, oh, oh my God. So really, really cool. So insert detail, of course, for headlights, insert detail for taillights, beautiful details all around, suspension, and all that stuff. And I will say something for Tomica Limited Vintage too. They've, they've really improved the more they've gone. So if you're going to go ahead and, and jump and get one, get a later number. Uh, this one's LV06, so this one is an older one. It's still cool. It's just this one does not, it does have suspension. It's a little stiff. So this is the Toyo Pet. Corona 1500. How appropriate for the time they're opening a Corona. Uh, so, this one's got lens detail for taillights, lens detail, of course, for the headlights, and it's got suspension. This is actually a really nice model. It's an oddball car. They may have never known existed. It looks like it's got, I don't know if this is a paint floor or what it is. Like a casting line in the back. That's very atypical to see that in a Tomica Limited Vintage. But again, this is an older one. So the newer ones, I think they've got this really down to a science. It's all figured out. <clears throat> Some of the older ones weren't quite as good, but they were still really good. Um, and I'm saving the Subaru for last. That one's going to be last. You guys are going to dig that one. At least I dig it quite a bit. So stick around here. The Toyota Carina 1600 ST. What appears to be white on the package. <clears throat> this one is LVN 12A, so limited vintage Neo 12A is the version. So the different color variations are going to have different letters there. And here it is in white. And that's actually a cool little car. 
So they make GTRs. They make um, I'm trying to think of what else is really popular that they make. They make Porsches, but those are super expensive. I think the GTRs are somewhat affordable, and I think they just had some for pre-order that you could get that that are coming out. But look at that lens detail for the tail and the headlights as well. Suspension, the wheels look great. They're just fantastic little models. Um, really cool. And another car, you know, like again, it, I didn't even know really existed. You know, it looks like almost like a Toyota Corolla or something like that from stateside. But uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with it. So just a cool little car and unique, unique to my collection. <clears throat> And then we get this one, a wagon. Who doesn't like wagons? Toyo Pet Crown Wagon LV21A. And because I'm not familiar with these cars, and unfortunately they don't really put years on here, and if they do, I can't read them because it's in Japanese. It's hard for me to date these cars without actually looking them up through Google and finding out what body style they are for the, the model that they are, and then kind of deciphering what year they are from there. So that's another thing. I wish they would put years, what year the replica is supposed to be on the package. I think that would be a cool touch. Uh, this is another one that's kind of older. It's LV21A. It's got the older style packaging. It's cool, though. So it appears that the suspension might be a little weird on this one because it almost gives it like a raked look but lens detail for the back <clears throat> lens detail for the front this one needs some new shocks I think but really cool nonetheless so awesome so LV18, 19, and 21. So this particular tooling, right, is made for all of those. So there's going to be slight alterations to the base, or I should say the base is made for all those. There's going to be some slight alterations to the rest of the car to make it compatible with uh, all the different models that they, they use the base for. That's why the base is such. Um, really, really cool, though fantastic little wagon <laughs> totally digging it all right lastly and finally we get like i don't know a really cool model i thought this thing was really awesome this is the subaru 1000 super dx uh, lv 63a and so the difference between Tomica Limited Vintage and Limited to Vintage Neo, by the way, besides just a letter being there for N, is typically the ones without the N are going to be older vehicles. The Neo are going to be something that's newer. I don't know where the cutoff date is, but uh, yeah. So here is the car. And you can see the printing. I guess it's sort of the same tone and color, but it's really not at all. This is a metallic champagne look to this car. And this car is just really cool. It's a it's an interesting little shape. I love how short and snubby like the, the little rear end is. I like how far back the wheel is and then how close it is to the end of the car. It's just an interesting looking, uh, you know, four door car. The interior is detailed. As you can see, it's almost got like creamsicle seats, like orange and white, kind of a weird combo. Um, just really interesting so copyright date 2008 so this since this is the a version of the car too you can basically say this is the first version of it out so likely it came and came out in 2008 which is unbelievable that that was 12 years ago already just beautiful no paint issues it just looks absolutely fantastic the, the glass is something to really behold because the plastic that they use for the windshields, whatever it is, it is like crystal clear, which is something that uh, some other stateside manufacturers could, could learn from. Kind of inserted taillights, even though they're like painted inserts, they look really good. And then you got your inserted headlights and grill. 
and that's going to be it. So we went long, um, 30 minutes on the second half. I am, you know, not sorry about that because we looked at some really cool stuff. Uh, so all together, this video is going to be around 40 minutes. If you stick around to the end, you know, thank you. If you didn't, you're not going to hear this anyway, but thank you for watching anyway. And I, I really appreciate you guys liking, commenting, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think, especially if you were a Hot Wheels collector that is just a Hot Wheels collector that just took a look at this. If you don't have any Tomica Limited Vintage in your collection, I want to know. Comment. Comment down. And comment why uh, that you haven't tried the brand out. What's the what's the uh, what's the hurdle? I'd just be interested. I'm interested in knowing. So that's it. That's all it is. All right. So thank you guys very much. Have a great day.